we tried uh, etp in europe uh, with 21 share and we received tremendous response from european community and of course we like to go for etf or debtco so we are talking continuously with the people from wall street and trying to see what is the best for xs ecosystems Hello everyone. Welcome to the XDC Nina podcast where we talk about the future of blockchain and technology. I'm super excited to bring you our 19th episode. I'm Rebecca Dawson, your host. Before we begin, a gentle reminder, nothing in this video is investment or financial advice. This is purely informational and ecosystem update purposes only. All right. A lot of you request to bring XDC founders into this podcast, and we've heard you. So let's make today's episode extra special. Joining us is someone who's been here since day one, Mr. Itesh Kakad, XDC Networks co-founder. He isn't just a blockchain builder; he is a visionary that helped XDC shape into one of the leading networks for real-world asset tokenization, regulation innovation, and enterprise adoption. Let's get started. Mr. Itesh, welcome to the podcast. Rebecca, thank you for having me here, and it's a great, great pleasure to be here. I'm very excited about today's podcast. Yes, so do I. And yeah, welcome back from New York. Um, I know that you've been part of many exciting discussions while you were in there, and our community is very much excited to know all these developments. So, if you can share us the highlight of your trip. What brought you to the U.S. and what are the current trends that you see in the U.S. around blockchain and digital assets? Thank you, Rebecca. So I've been to New York for almost one and a half months, and uh, I've seen lots of trends. So I thought let's give update to the XGC community. Uh, I've been to the event which is like Crypto Monday, where Mr. Donald Trump came last times, and then I was part of that event, and I met many people surprisingly from XGC community. And they always made look. It says whatever you are doing, please give us update. We like to talk to you more. We like to get more information from you. So I decided, okay, I will try to be more on a screen, and I like to give more and more updates around what I am doing around, what's the current trend, and getting back to your question, what trend I see in New York or in Wall Street in general. So one trend was very exciting was around a genius act. So Genius Act has been passed in the Parliament. With together, there is another uh, act which was around Anti Surveillance of CBDC Act. If you combine both these act, you will find there is a clear regulatory framework for stable coins. And during that time, Circle's IPO was out, and uh, even Wall Street was like you know curious what might be the response of these circles because it's innovative products of a stable coin. But after Circle got listed with the New York Stock Exchange, everybody knows price jump from thirty dollar to three hundred dollar within no time. So stable coin looks to be a trending topic uh, within the New York community and. Uh, Many large organization they want to get into the stable coins, uh, you know, participation. And uh, when we look at as XDC, we are the perfect layer one uh, infrastructure for stable coin. Might be like three reason what I see uh, from the institution side. One is about low low fee, low transaction fee. It's uh, very much required for a micro transaction. Uh, second part is. Uh, It's the fastest, so our transaction time with XDC is just two second. So it's very required to like you know settle any transaction as early as possible. And third thing, ESG factor, uh, which I was not very much aware. But when I started talking to the people, I realized that people look at you know energy uh, sustainability is part, and the basic infrastructures of XDC is designed in a way where. We consume almost ninety nine percent less energy compared to proof of work based networks like Bitcoin. So that is one trend I see around a stable coin. Another important uh, trend which just become a very popular is around a digital asset treasury company. So they call a debt co. Uh, it's a very simple structure where uh, you know Warren Buffett started Berkshire Hathaway forty years back. And Berkshire Hathaway used to hold 
stocks like McDonald's or Coca-Cola and it's become one of the biggest company in the world. Similarly, the new trend is around a companies called Deadco. They are holding uh, digital assets, whether it's a Bitcoin or Ethereum or XDC. So uh, Deadco, like, you know, it's already listed. It's like a you know, listed entity with the stock market like New York Stock Exchange or a Nasdaq. And they hold uh, digital asset as a uh, assets, and they try to monetize those money. Like uh, they try to get yield on a uh, digital assets. They try to put money into DeFi and try to get additional yield. So this trend is become a very popular. So in short, two trend is very popular. One is a stable coin. Another is dead co. So this is the in thing uh, within the New York community currently. Lovely updates. Thank you for that feedback. And I've heard that you're also, I mean, we are also setting up a New York office. Can you share us more about that? Uh, yeah. So looking at the trend after meeting so many people, what I realize, uh, there's a huge demand uh, for layer one network like XGC, uh, for a stable coin, uh, for RWA, which is our narrative straight finance payment settlement. And they are very excited. Uh, they wanted to work with... Uh, network like very reliable network like xdc so we decided to set up innovation hub and office in new york it's going to start uh, we already hire local people five to six people they they will be around in the community they will help us uh, to get more adoptions around rwa try to get involved with the local institutions so uh, i'm also very much excited myself uh, to get our presence with new york so it's a great news for XGC community. We'll have a place in New York. So anybody from US, they can visit to the office and they can chit chat with uh, other XDC community members. Amazing. So it seems that XDC just strengthened its position in US. And clearly from your uh, US trip, your recent trip, the institutional doors is opening wider for compliant blockchain ecosystems such as XDC. Now, talking about two points that you mentioned earlier about the DATCO, right? Can you explain the significance of exploring DATCO with NASDAQ in New York Stock Exchange? And also, we want to know more about this ETF direction because you previously mentioned from your interview with Fintech Global TV that you are looking for the right partner in the U.S. to apply. Yeah. So, Rebecca, uh, like the trend of ETF, you know, after Bitcoin got ETF approval, everybody started talking about ETF. But during that time, Deadco uh, started getting more attraction. The reason was very clear that uh, it's very easy to go. Uh, right now, the structure is very easily available. So generally, uh, people or ecosystems, they prefer a model of reverse merger. So they hire, like, you know, they get take over a company. They just restructure it as a Deadco. So Deadco looks to be a long-term structure, according to me. And... Uh, the only reason is like you know it's listed with the regulated exchange like new york stock exchange or nasdaq or any other stock exchange second thing is like you know a company need to give a proper filing like they need to be a very transparent about their accounts about what they are doing they need to keep a proper transparency with the investors or the community so uh that co is definitely going to be a long-term trend and uh, ETF, the only problem I see right now is that it's taking too much time for the approval from the regulators. And in that co regulator applying, uh, trying to standardize the process. So we are exploring both uh, ETF as well as that co. We are looking for the right partners. As you was, everybody knows that we tried uh, ETP in Europe uh, with 21 share and we received tremendous response from European community. And of course, we like to go for ETF or DATCO. So we are talking continuously with the people from Wall Street and trying to see what is the best for XS ecosystems. Right. Perfect. So yes, as you mentioned, ETF does make sense because we just had, we just released um, XDC ETP in Europe. Now talking about DATCO, it's a lot to process, right? Um, but your explanation helped shed some light about what DATCO is and why it matters. Now um, I want to take it to another step. Okay. Um, in, in, in DATCO, does XDC Foundation is ready to move towards this structure or how does XDC ecosystem fit in that model? I think, Rebecca, this is a very great question, but I like to clarify, I'm not 
as a XDC founder, but I am not part of XDC foundation. Of course, I see a trend. Uh, all the Web3's uh, foundation, they are dying and they are moving towards our debt code structures. Uh, for XDC foundation, I think that's the right way to go. Uh, convert XDC foundation to XDC debt code properly. And, uh, but again, I, I can just give advice. I cannot interfere uh, into the working of uh, XDC foundation because it's run by uh, like XDC community members itself. So, of course, I will advise to go for Detco structures, convert uh, XZC Foundation to Detco, but we'll see how it goes. All right, perfect. So, Detco, not just it opens to the traditional institution or investors, but it also allows access to capital and, of course, a new growth avenue for the XTC. So, I think this is where stable coins like USDC come in. And a huge congratulations to all of us when Circle released the announcement that they are deploying or supporting XTC Network. So what do you think, I mean, what is the importance of stablecoin integration like USDC for XDC? Does it unlock something for cross-border payments or trade? Or what do you see in the future? Uh, Rebecca, we are sitting on a historical time where uh, Genius Act and uh, Anti-Surveillance of CBDC Act has been passed in the parliament in U.S which is clear indication that uh, government, they approved, you know, they give regulatory backing for a stable coin. They give very clear framework that uh, $1 is equal to one USDC or one stable coin. And like companies need to maintain 100% reserve in case of, uh, in either in cash or in uh, US treasury bond. So I see a great opportunities uh, like uh, for this stable coin. Uh, of course, uh, the circle, I am very thankful for circle. They added support for XDC network because uh, what they require, like, you know, every institution, they are into payment space or a trade finance space. They required ISO 2002 to compliant, which is uh, enforcement for the futures requirement of a cross-border settlement. And uh, where I see, like, it's a huge market, very huge market, very great opportunity for a stable coin. If you look at uh, normal banks, they tr like process more than like 4 trillion to 20 trillion a day transaction. And we are just, you know, we just started. Even if you look at the global uh, transaction, yearly transaction is not even a trillion dollar. So there is a huge opportunity where the tradition institution they are doing are uh, like 5 to 20 trillions in a day. So it's just started. And uh, I think... We are very lucky to, you know, sitting, we are sitting on a day where this historical loss has been passed on a parliament. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, I am very thankful for Circle for adding support to XDC. Yeah, it's a huge market out there. And yeah, clearly, I think stablecoin is pivotal for payments today. And it might even have a bigger role once regulations are in place. So with that foundation, Mr. Ritesh, um, I'm curious, after meeting Wall Street investment bankers, investors, and partners, what do they like most about XDC alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum? Uh, it's a great question. And uh, when, like, you know, they started understanding about XDC, so they call it a truly uh, decentralized and community-driven project. Like, we just covered a point, uh, XDC Foundation, uh, as a founder, myself, and Atul, they are not part of the XDC Foundation, but it's run by the independent community members. So they like a point of a decentralization. Uh, they like ESG point where energy consumption is lowest compared to other proof of work network. They also likes a KYC node. One thing I observed, like whenever I meet institutions, they are very worried about KYC or ML compliance. And the question is like every node validators, they write a transaction. Now how to like find out whether this transaction written by some of the sanctioned country. Hmm. Even if you take Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other network, they don't have anything. But in case of XDC, uh, we are very KYC compliant node and we have slashing mechanism so we can remove node from the network. Of course, we'll require two, three majority to remove those nodes. But these points they really like compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum's. And they are very eager to work with XDC network because of these points. 
Amazing. It's very uh, wonderful and amazing to see XDC being recognized as one of the top players as well, not just Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, Suritesh, we covered a lot of updates from Wall Street, ETF, .co, and a lot of things. And I know that our community members are thankful for all these updates. Before we end the podcast, what is your final message for our community members and builders? Yeah, I think... Uh, a great question and I am thankful uh, for you for this particular question. Uh, so look, all the community's members, we are sitting on a very important point. Uh, if you look at a global supply of a currency, if you look at uh, real estates or metals or stocks, or if you look at a bond market, the total size of market is around $700 trillion. So if you combine RWA with stablecoin, it's a huge market opportunity for us. And if a blockchain, I'm not talking only about XDC, but I'm talking about an entire Web3 space. If blockchain can bring up 1% of these transactions, it's become $7 trillion in next three to five years of time, which is a very huge opportunities for a Web3 space. So I'm giving this message. I like to tell all the community members, uh, be part of this historical uh, journey and keep supporting Web3 innovations. Community, you've heard that yourself. Be part of the uh, this changes and be part of XTC. So thank you so much, Mr. Ritesh, for being part of the podcast. I think uh, today's episode, it gave us a clear view of how XDC is evolving and how XDC is positioning itself globally. So thank you so much for giving us a front row seat for these developments. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. To our viewers out there, I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. And if you want to know more about XDC Network, go to zinfin.org. Or if you have a question, post it to xdc.dev. Keep exploring, keep learning. I'll see you on the next episode.